This is Tom Benecki. Today we're going over the 10 new treatments for arthritis. This is the new breakthroughs that we're starting now. There are six common types of arthritis, and this is a confusing topic. When patients come in, sometimes I can tell they're confused, so I'm going to go over them. Number six, ankylosing spondylitis. This is a type of arthritis that affects the spine. Number five, gout. Gout is a form of inflammatory arthritis caused by excessive uric acid. As a foot doctor, I see this a lot, especially big toe joint pain, ball of the foot pain, ankle pain can be very common. This affects almost 10 million people in the United States every year. Lupus. Lupus is a systemic disease and it's an autoimmune disorder. It can lead to osteoarthritis. Number three, psoriatic arthritis. This affects people with psoriasis. I personally have psoriasis. I get dry skin on my scalp, on my face. I have to moisturize every single day. This is a very frustrating disease. It's estimated that 30% of people with psoriasis will develop psoriatic arthritis, but don't worry. We're going to give you some nice solutions. Rheumatoid arthritis. This is an autoimmune disorder that can affect more than just the joints. According to the Arthritis Foundation, at least 1.5 million people in the United States have rheumatoid arthritis, much more common in women. This is when both your hands, both your feet are aching. And number one, ba -ba -ba -ba, osteoarthritis. This is a damaged or injured joint. When you lose cartilage on your joint, at least 35 million people in the United States are affected and probably way higher now. Typically, this affects older adults affects joints like the knees, hips, hands, and spine. This is the top 10 new treatments for arthritis, the emergent science. It's not just being overweight, but it's the inflammatory markers like cytokines, inflammatory factors, and joint regeneration. Just be aware, even though these top 10 are so exciting to me, everybody's a little bit different. None of this stuff's guaranteed. Work with your doctor if you have arthritis. Number 10, biological medications. This is huge, especially for rheumatoid arthritis. Biological agents which target specific parts of the immune system have become so sophisticated that I heard my rheumatologist that I talked to say that she can basically keep rheumatoid arthritis symptoms away until the end of the person's life, whereas before this used to be pretty much a death sentence for some people. Their fingers would fuse, their toes would fuse. A study published in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases showed that TNF inhibitors can significantly reduce disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis patients. I work with a rheumatologist personally, but she tells me such exciting news that pretty much if diagnosed and treated correctly, the game has completely changed. If you don't respond to traditional rheumatoid arthritis medications, go see a rheumatologist, go see a specialist and get these prescribed. It can make such a difference. And this isn't just for rheumatoid arthritis, but psoriatic arthritis, different types of arthritis. You can attack these individual messenger molecules now and break up that inflammatory cascade. I could talk all day about biological markers. Number nine, platelet-rich plasma injections, PRP, this is something that I used to do quite a bit, but it essentially involves drawing the patient's blood, spinning it down, so you get all those good growth factors and the, those signaling molecules, and you inject them back into the painful joint. A study in the American Journal of Sports Medicine found that, that PRP injections can improve pain and function in knee osteoarthritis. The problem is insurance doesn't cover this stuff, so it is generally cash pay. PRP is considered a safe treatment option. It leverages the body's natural healing mechanisms, this will not regenerate cartilage though, but it can significantly help with pain and function in chronic pain. Number eight, stem cell therapy. This experimental therapy uses stem cells potentially to regenerate damaged cartilage and osteoarthritis. I'll tell you practically, I don't see this cartilage regenerating, but it can help with inflammation significantly. A study reported in the Osteoarthritis and Cartilage Journal showed positive outcomes in cartilage repair using stem cells in osteoarthritis patients. The fact is stem cell therapy is still largely experimental and regulatory approval varies by region. Spoiler alert, insurance does not cover this stuff no matter what. They don't cover anything. They don't even cover the basics anymore. Insurance, very frustrating. I think everybody would agree with that at this point. Number seven, gene therapy. Early stage research is exploring how gene therapy can be used to treat arthritis. This can involve altering genes to reduce inflammation or to promote the growth of new cartilage. A study in Arthritis Research and Therapy Journal have shown potential in gene therapy to deliver anti-inflammatory effects. Introducing new genes is still experimental. 
I don't think we're anywhere near a practical point. There is like a rich millionaire who spends like at least $3 million on himself a year. I was talking with another doctor and he told me it's much more likely that somebody over injects themselves with something dangerous rather than reaching their goal of 160 years of lifespan like they claim they will. It's rolling the dice when you're introducing new genes because there's no guarantee that it's going to be introduced accurately. So that's kind of the fact where it's left off. It's not practical yet. Number six, targeted synthetic DMARDs. For rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory conditions, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs that are synthetic, such as JAK inhibitors, and that's, that's a messenger in the cells, offers an alternative to biologics and is used to slow disease progression. In a study in the New England Journal of Medicine demonstrated the effectiveness of JAK inhibitors in reducing symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. These synthetic DMARDs offer an alternative for patients who can't tolerate or don't respond to biologic agents. The reason this was a little bit higher is the New England Journal of Medicine is just such a big successful journal that I had to mention it higher. Number five, topical treatments. New formulations of topical treatments, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and capsaicin provide localized pain relief with fewer systemic side effects. The Journal of Rheumatology found that topical anti-inflammatories can be very effective in managing osteoarthritis pain with fewer side effects. The fact is, and this is true for me, topical medications are getting better. There's new agents that can introduce it into the tissue or the joint, and the side effects are extremely low, and the cost is getting much more reasonable. There are some really good ones that are prescription, but they're just so expensive and the copay can be so expensive. Creams like Voltaren, Capsaicin, if you have joint pain, this is something you can start using almost immediately for a low cost with pretty good results. There are stronger, more advanced ones out there, and I should do a video about that. In fact, I will, I'm gonna write it down. Number four, advanced pain management techniques. Techniques such as radio frequency ablation or spinal cord stimulation are being used a lot. I work with a company as well. If somebody has like crippling pain down to their feet or the nerve pain is not getting better no matter what, sometimes you can put a stimulator on the back that can essentially let this person live a pretty normal life. I have a video going over all of these. I link that down below. But essentially, you trial it for a week to two weeks. You see if your pain goes away or not. If it goes away, then you can actually implant that underneath your skin and there's a battery that you can charge through your skin and it can last a pretty significant period of time. These techniques are meant to be more for end stage people. So if you're having crippling pain that's just not getting better no matter what, this can be pretty effective for you. Number three, weight loss and nutritional support. There are new strategies like new medications like the Ozempix, the Manjaro's, these can be really good. I also have a great video on berberine, nature's ozempic, and the new berberine. So there's a new souped up berberine. I have videos on both of those. This is something that's relatively low cost. The ozempics are, are extremely high priced. There's a lot of options on weight loss. Is it quite there yet? You know, it can be really good in extreme circumstances, but it's just important to really keep your muscle strength up. Because if you lose too much weight too quickly without gaining muscle, you could be in even more trouble. The Arthritis Care and Research Journal reported that weight loss can significantly reduce knee pain in overweight and obese individuals. That's obviously true. Little kids don't really have joint pain unless they have something inflammatory like rheumatoid arthritis. But 400 pound people are more likely to have knee pain. That's just a fact. I have a video on the top nine supplements for joint pain. Check that out below. I go over all these turmeric, hyaluronic acid, berberine, dihydroberberine. Number two, physical therapy and exercise. This is such a no-brainer to me and it's so effective. When I work with somebody with knee, hip, joint pain, while it doesn't get rid of it 100%, getting on a good program, this is really the key long-term. A study in the Annals of Internal Medicine found physical therapy extremely effective for hip, knee, back osteoarthritis. Getting your muscle strength up, getting your foot strength up, getting your knee strength up, your hamstrings, your thighs, this is the key. Even if you have stage four bone-on-bone -bone arthritis in all of your joints, having muscle strength and flexibility will help that significantly. It won't grow your cartilage back, but it makes it so much better. And I'll tell you, 75 plus percent of my patients that come in with severe pain, getting their muscle strength up, the proper shoes, proper insoles, proper ankle braces, proper everything, and muscle strength and flexibility, almost all their pain goes away, even though they're still bone on bone. 
something to consider. This is just my practical experience. Number one, surgical advances. I'm not one to push surgery. In fact, I have significantly cut down on all the major surgeries I do. I used to do literally thousands of surgeries when I first came out. For severe cases, particularly osteoarthritis, if there's a bone chunk, if something broke, there are now minimally invasive techniques. You can go in through a scope, you can clean things up, you could go in through small pokes, you can realign bones. You still have to cut the bones, you still have to put some plates or screws in there potentially, or implants. The recovery time is getting much better. The Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery highlighted the benefits of minimally invasive hip surgery and knee surgery. This is now quicker recoveries. The outcomes are significantly better. Surgical techniques have evolved to reduce recovery time and increase the longevity of prosthetic joints. I still think there's a problem with the healthcare system though, because hospitals make almost all their money pushing surgeries. I don't think it's a proper incentive in society today. Realistically, you can attack these things early. If the healthcare system worked the way it should work, and if everybody had access to it, you can get to this stuff well ahead of time with proper strengthening, proper physical therapy, it can work extremely well. Things that I do, I use things like shockwave therapy. I use things like lasers. This is stuff that's like 99.99% .99 safe. You could do it right away and I see results immediately. Check out my video on proper stretching, orthotics, braces, stuff that immediately with almost no work and hardly any cost can start removing your pain very quickly and assuredly check out that video below. And check out the top nine supplements as well.